Good day grade limits. Welcome to this last lesson in week 24. In this lesson we're going to be back practicing all our theorems but specifically the theorem that the angles subtended by the same segment or arc in a circle are equal. So let's get started. Okay it says find x and y and we've got our little points and you'll notice they don't ask us for reasons so that's quite nice. So all we're doing at the moment is finding x and y. Now you'll notice that these two lines here, this line and this line, are parallel. And if they're parallel, then we've got some special things. Do you remember the maths is fun, where we had F-U-N, and what happened? That these two angles were corresponding, so they were equal. These two angles were alternate, so they were equal. And these two are co-interior, so they added up to 180 degrees. So if we look for this, we can see that we can find a beautiful end there on its side. Actually, not I mean it's on its side, it's straight up. So therefore, x is equal to 50 degrees. And the reason would be because they're alternates. And now if you look carefully, you can see that x is subtended by that point there. And if you go up, it's a point of subtended by this point. And if you look down, you can see that this point also subtends this angle down Yeah. So you could say, okay, fine, that that's also 50 degrees. And why is that? That is because the angles are subtended by equal arcs or by the same arc. And just for record, that means that that is equal to that because therefore there are a it is an isosceles triangle. Never mind, you didn't need to do that. Okay, let's carry on. Now they want us again, without reasons, to find points C and D. So let's look at what they've given us. We've got a circle. Okay, and we've been told that this point here, this random point of intersection, this angular intersection is 102 degrees. L is 24 degrees. That's M. That's D and that's C. Okay, there are a couple of ways that we can do this. The first way that I would think to do this is to say, okay, fine, I want to somehow get into this triangle that's got C and D in it, and this is supplementary to this angle here. So therefore, I could say, well, look, that's 180 degrees minus 102 degrees, which is going to be 70 8 degrees. Therefore I know that this is 78 degrees. I also know that this is being subtended by J and M and K is being subtended by J and M. Therefore I know that this here is going to be 24 degrees. And then I can say, okay, fine, well, this plus this plus this have to add up to 180 degrees. Therefore, I can say that D is going to be 180 minus 24 minus 78. And then I can get out my little calculator and I can go 1, eight. I'm not showing you this on the screen because if you don't know how to do subtraction on your calculator by now, grade 11, we're in trouble. And then that becomes 78 degrees as well. But I've realized afterwards, after I started, I realized that there was actually a much quicker and easier way to do this. So I just want to show you that way as well. Um, so let me just do that for you. Either way, the nice thing about geometry is there's usually a billion ways, well not quite a billion, but there's quite a few ways that you can solve every problem. So that's quite cool. As long as you're following the rules of geometry, it doesn't matter which way you use it. Okay, so what I would do first, now that I've seen it, is that I would say, oh look, this is 24 degrees, therefore that is 24 degrees. Why? Because they're both subtended by the points JM, right? Happy with that? That's there and that's there. This is the exterior angle to these two angles. Therefore we can say 102 degrees is equal to C plus D, but C is 24 degrees. So I could say 102 degrees is equal to 24 plus D. Therefore my D is equal to 78 degrees again. See, so it didn't matter which way you went. Right, let's try another one. This time they want us to find X, Y, Z and W. Sure, X, Y, Z and W. Oh, 
Okay, let's breathe. What have they given us? They've given us this huge circle. They've given us P, Q, R, T, S, P, and the center O. Okay. And we know that this angle here is 137 degrees. That angle there is 137 degrees. Now the cool thing is, do you see that that angle is being subtended by S and R? S and R. And we know that there's a rule that the angle at the center is twice the angle at the circumference. So therefore we can say that X is equal to 2 times 137 degrees and if we want to give reasons we could say that angle at the center equals 2 times the angle at circumference okay so that's going to be 2 7 to 14 carry 1 that's 274 degrees so now we know that the whole of this is 274 degrees and we have found X. Right, let's change color. So let's change to blue. Okay, now they want Y but that's pretty easy because do you see that X plus Y from all the degrees around a point and the number of degrees around a point is 360 degrees. Therefore we can say that Y is equal to 360 minus 274 and you can just say angles on a point okay so you got 360 minus 274 and we get 86 degrees so therefore y is equal to 86 degrees okay nice and easy Cha ching now they want z now they want Z. Let's change color again. So let's go to green. Now they want Z. And Z is using the fact that the angle at the center is twice the angle at circumference because Z is subtended by SR. If you look over here, yeah, you go, you got Q, go into Q, yeah. But Y is also subtended by RS. Okay, therefore we can say that Z is going to be half of Y. Why? Because the angle at the center equals two times the angle at the circumference. Okay, not too bad, hey? So therefore Z is equal to half of our 86 degrees which is equal to 43 degrees. So now we know that Z is 43 degrees. And now they want W. Now they want W. W, W, W. So let's change the color again. Okay, so now we want W. Now we are using the fact that the angles subtended by the same points, if they're on the circumference in the same segment, in other words, the same half, then they're equal. So let's have a look at this. Do you see that Z is still subtended by SR? But P is also subtended by SR. So therefore P, which is W, W equals Z, which is equal to 43 degrees, and this will be angles subtended by equal arcs. Okay, you could have also related W to Y and just gone that W is equal to half the sum, I mean half this angle at the center. Now grade 11s, please note, and this is important because most geometry questions are like this, they don't tend to, unless they're being really mean and nasty, they tend to build on it. So they won't ask you for X, Y, Z and W unless you can use information that you've already proven. Okay, so they do try and help you to see what you need to do next. Right, let's do one more. It says given circle with center O, okay, let me go, 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 center O, there's O, WT, WT is equal to TY. So WT is equal to TY. And XWT is 35 degrees. And angle XWT is 35 degrees. And it says determine F. So they want us to find that whole angle there, F. Okay, so 
Now we are using quite a few theorems because we know Okay, so we know first of all that we've got a radius dropping down to bisect a chord and if a bisect a chord it means that these points there are 90 degrees, right? Therefore we can work out that angle there. So let's do that. Okay, so what do we know? We know that angle XTW equals 90 degrees. Why? Because we've got a OT is a perpendicular bisector bisector of WT. So, so you, can you see that we're using the, one of the first theorems we learned? That if you've got a line coming down from the center of the circle and it cuts the chord in half then it is perpendicular. Right. Then if we've got in triangle and I'm going to look at this triangle since we've already got the 35 degrees in that and we want F which is on this side as well. Do you see that in this triangle we have got in triangle TXW we have got that W is 35 degrees and we've got the T is 90 degrees so we can work out X. We can say angle X is equal to 180 degrees minus your 35 degrees minus your 90 because it's perpendicular which becomes 90 minus 35 degrees which is just 55 degrees. So now we know that this angle here is 55 degrees. Right, now remember we're trying to get to this one, yeah. So let's just change colors, yeah. Okay, now let's look at that big triangle there. Now we proved something special about angles in a semicircle. Now remember that X and Z are a straight line going through the center of the circle, so that means that they are a diameter. And therefore this half is a semicircle and that half is a semicircle. And what is special about an angle in this semicircle? Remember it is 90 degrees. And remember how did we prove it? We said that this angle here at the center is 180 degrees. This is the angle at the circumference subtended by the same arc, so therefore that's half of it which is 90 degrees. But we don't need to say that. We can just say W, in fact XWZ if we want to be pedantic, is equal to 90 degrees and we just say that it's an angle in a semicircle. Right. Then if you look at the red triangle, do you see that I've got that this is 55 degrees and I've got that that's 90 degrees, so therefore I can find F. Ta -da! So we can say, therefore F is equal to 180 degrees minus 55 degrees minus 90 degrees and you just say angle in triangle and that there becomes 35 degrees. 35 degrees. So angle F happens to be 35 degrees as well. How cool is that? So we now know that that's 35 degrees. So do you see that we use quite a few theorems? We use the fact that we had the angle that we've got our radius dropping down and bisecting this chord which is then perpendicular. We use the fact that this was a little right angle triangle. We use the fact that the angle at the center is twice the angle of the circumference and therefore this is a right angle and then forgot that to be 35 degrees again. Grade 11, you need to go practice, practice, practice and then do the, the assessment at the end of the section. Have a good day.